No questions? So why do you cut it at seven inches? Um, because, as it turns out, so each valve, I'm gonna put an elbow and an elbow, and that gives them enough clearance to miss each other. When I, when I use this as a spacer in between, you know, if I put a valve here and a valve there, I have enough room for them to miss each other when I twist them off. So I just happen to know that seven inches and what I'm doing is I'm going to put, you know, there's going to be a fitting. So they're on a fitting, a fitting. Right, and then a, ri a riser and a... So it's going to be like that. So from here to there, there has to be enough clearance to miss the next valve. Right? So I'll make three of them. So I'll make one going up, one going over, and one going down to the garden hose. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're gonna we're mimicking the plumbing as if it were at the house. We're just creating a um, a mock-up of uh, a plumbing to supply water to a valve, and we're gonna set this up. But it's good it's good practice to it's good good way for me to show somebody else how to uh, how to do proper plumbing is to just sweat these piece these little pieces together You have a YouTube channel? Yeah, YouTube channel is uh, YouTube slash Rototiller guy. So you know what's interesting is uh, as of now, this is so. This is April or May of 2023, and uh, so I just bought this stick of 10-foot stick of three-quarter inch uh, rigid type L pipe, and this was basically 50 bucks with with tax. And uh, two years ago, or three years ago, before COVID. That same pipe was $20. $20. So it's interesting that that's gone up. Maybe it was, it might've been $22 three years ago. And now it's $50. It's incredible the, how, the cost, how it's gone up. Uh, it's just, it's, so. So, you, you need to cut, uh, clean all these parts. And this is pretty, a little rusty. You can clean it with this. Or, if you're lazy and fat like me, you clip off the end and put it in your drill. And look how non-rusty that one is. I probably use it a little more often. You gotta, you got to clean the inside and kind of scratch the inside. You, you're basically scratching it up so that when you weld it together or solder it together, the solder has something to grab hold of. So you're, scra you're basically scratching the inside of the pipe and then scratching the outside. But you're also exposing, you're, you're knocking off any oxidized metal so that it has something clean to grab hold of. It doesn't like adhering to uh, non-clean. Um, it doesn't matter that the outside of this pipe is tarnished. This is where it's gonna, 
this is where it's going to look like you know it looks prettier when, when it's nice and clean like that though do you have different size cleaners for different size pipes yes so they make this is a three quarter inch one for three quarter inch pipe and this is the internal one but now this is the external so now i've cleaned all the inside pieces now i have to clean the outside pieces so everything that touches each other has to get clean and scratched so you're, you're kind of knocking off any kind of wax or grease buildup. So now obviously when you're cleaning it, don't lay it in the dirt. Because now it's not clean anymore. If, you're, if you add any, especially organic material, um, it doesn't like to, you're going to end up with a leak. So you spend, you spend your time doing a good job cleaning and your effort goes way down when it comes time to actually soldering it together. So the majority of your time is actually spent in designing and understanding where you want the pipe to be and how, and then cutting all the pieces and then, uh, and then cleaning them all up in preparation. So the preparation is the hardest part. And then when you're, see this a little, it's got like, there's like some dirt right there. So that's going to be a problem. That's much better. Okay. So now we've, we've cleaned all the surfaces that we're gonna lock together. We're just, this is a very simple thing that we're building. We're not trying to do anything really super complicated. Now this is the, uh, the flux. And sometimes I call it the juice. So I'm very liberal with this, meaning I'm, I am not stingy about using this. What does the flux do? So what it does is initially, well, it's keeping that surface clean. For one, I've just coated the inside of the surfaces, right? So each of those surfaces are now clean. And when we heat this up, this is gonna turn into kind of a liquid. And it gives a path for the then, for when we, when we melt the solder and that becomes a liquid, it fills the, the gap where this is, is. So this, so it's basically it facilitates this hitting, getting in there. So it kind of sucks the... It sucks it in. You're okay. See, you'll see it when I, when I solder it together, you'll see it actually suck in, it'll draw it in. And that's when you know you've done it right, is when you see it draw in. Might be a long video, but... I think it's actually good to see the beginning of the whole the whole process if people have the time to to watch it. So you put the flux on both ends? Everything that's going to touch. So just like I clean the inside and the outside, I'm, I apply the, the flux to the inside and the outside of both ends too. So yes, you're, what you're doing is you're you, you, don't, you just don't want to be stingy with this stuff. My, my time is way more valuable than this flux. And being stingy, if it, if it you know, causes me to have a leak and have to tear it all apart and rebuild it again, then that's... That's been an ineffective use of my time. So if I value my time, then, I, then I'm just very liberal with this stuff.
How fast is the solder dry? Um, so it's it's molten metal, and as soon as it solidifies, it's it's dry. That's it. So. Um, you, that that's definitely something you'll see. You'll you'll literally see that happen right before your eyes. Like a minute, maybe. Not even that. It's amazing. So, all this is is all cut to size. It's all been cleaned, and it's and it's all been all the flux has been applied to it. Now, what I do is I find a nice flat place. And I love doing it right in the street, like that. So by laying it flat like that, I'm not getting really wonky uh, angles. Okay, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one. And then I'm gonna have you, you do the other, okay? Okay. So, now, see these end pieces here? They're bulkier metal. Uh-huh. So they take longer to, to heat up. Okay. So, it's it, they're actually harder to do than this elbow, these elbow joints, or a T-joint. You got that nice and centered, right? You might want to get really close right here, drill in right here to this, this thing here. So you straighten out your, your solder because that's, right? You see how that got silver right there? Yeah. So that's the acidity happening. And then, yeah, I just touched this to it and it melted. And do you see how it's drawing it in? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. That's it. That one's done. Okay. So because I put that flux all the way around that, uh -huh. when it was drawing this in, it was applying it all the way around the outside of it. So it's all that, and I and I measured how much of this I was using. You only use about that much. Okay. And then it's and then it's done. So here I'll hold the I'll hold the camera. So let's uh, let's use it here. Now I obviously don't touch the pipe because it's hot. Yeah. I just, okay. And you hit it like right here. Well, because because you want to want that, we're gonna start on that joint first. Uh -huh. You can start here, but then kind of move that direction. So wait for it to get silver. There you go. See how nice and silver that is. Let's try it. No, don't take the heat off. Just tap, tap the wall with the heat up. There you go, you see how it's turning into molten. You see it? You see how it's just getting drawn in there, right? Okay, that's good. You can now work on this side. You don't have to stop. Go ahead and go ahead and nice and hot. Okay, that's good.